All right, so your wallet is funded, your ADA is off the exchange, and now it's time for the fun part, time to delegate. But there are over a thousand pools. How do you choose? Well, let's look at some strategies together so you can find the right stake pool for you. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, we're going to look at the process of selecting a stake pool. We'll start by trying to answer the question, what kind of a delegator am I? Then, once we know that, we'll look at some strategies we can use towards that objective. And finally, we'll see what tools we have at our disposal to make our jobs even easier. Let's jump in. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do in selecting our stake pool is we're going to want to come to pooltool.io. There are a few different tools out there that we can use, but we've found that pool tool is probably the best combination of the information that we would be looking for, as well as a nice UI that's easy to work with. So when we come here to pool tool, we see a few different settings here. Um, here's the list of all the different pools. Um, we can do a search for a specific pool. We can filter for different criteria for our pools. We'll look at that in a minute. And then down here at the bottom, we see rows per page. Right now we're only showing 20. Let's bump that up to 100. It'll make our job a little bit easier. Okay, great. So before we even start, the first thing you're going to want to think about is what kind of a delegator you are. And that comes in sort of a few different ways. The first one is you want to think about, are you somebody who is specifically looking to get the best return on your stake ROS possible? Or maybe you're a purpose-driven delegator and you want to find a pool that helps to advance a cause that you're passionate about, either by things they do directly, or maybe they do donations to certain causes you believe in, or maybe they just help the broader Cardano ecosystem in some way. So that's the first thing you're going to want to think about. The next thing you're going to want to consider is how active do you want to be? So once you've decided, okay, I want to chase this level of return on stake, or I want to make sure that I am delegating to a pool that has this kind of an objective or mission. Then you want to think about how actively you want to be modifying this. Do you want to just, okay, this one matches my goals, no matter what those goals are. I'll delegate to it, and then I'm going to let my Cardano and my ADA basically just work for me and let the returns work for me. Or do you want to do an approach where you're much more active, and every few epics you want to follow up and see how your pool is doing, either from a return standpoint or from a mission standpoint, and then realign and recheck again? There's no wrong answers, but it's something you're going to need to think about and decide. So once you have that figured out, then we come to pool tool. So here on the page of pool tool, let's take a look at what we've got. We see a column here for the ticker. This is the identifier for the pool, the pool's actual name, the specific pool ID, this epic fee. There's a fixed fee that is taken off the top of the rewards that come back every time rewards are paid out, no matter whether the pool generates 40,000 ADA in rewards or 1,000 ADA in rewards. That's the fixed fee that'll come off the top. Then there's the variable fee, which of course will be variable at a percentage based off of the amount of ADA that that pool was awarded. Okay, um, Epic fee you'll usually see, look, this one's a tiny bit more. This is a tiny bit more here. Epic fee is usually, if you look, almost always 340. That's just kind of the convention. And it's pretty much always that. So that one's, you know, something to look out for to see if it's absurdly high, but that's, you know, uh, about the standard. The variable fee uh, can be anywhere from 0%, in which case this means that aside from the flat fee, the pool will be taking nothing off the top of the rewards. This one is all the way up to 7.5%, but it can go all the way up to 100%. If it's 100%, that basically means that it's a private pool and that the stake pool operator will be taking 100% of the rewards that are assigned to that pool and they're going to keep them for themselves. So you don't want to delegate to a pool that has 100% variable fee because they are a private pool and you won't be getting any of that. Uh, here we see the return on stake for the last epic. We see the active stake, the active stake percentage relative to the total uh, ADA on the network, the epic blocks percentage, and this is the percentage of blocks that that pool has been assigned this epic, and then the actual amount of blocks they have actually been assigned this epic. We see here the live stake percentage and the live stake raw value, the lifetime return on stake, and the total lifetime blocks that have been assigned to this pool. Now, for the difference between live stake and active stake, a short version of thinking the way to think about this is the live stake is the amount of stake that is delegated to the pool right now at this instant, and the active stake means the amount of stake that is active in the pool based on the last epic snapshot that was taken. 
For more details on the difference between live stake and active stake, uh, check out our video that we have coming out very soon. We'll link it above as soon as it's ready um, on the Cardano delegation lifecycle and how these snapshots and payouts and all of the timing works. Okay, so now that we've covered all the different columns, I want to point out one caveat here. If we go over here to live stake and we sort this from top down, we'll see how several of these numbers are in red. See how these in the hundreds and the sixties keep going. All of these are still in red. And right about when we get below 63.7 million ADA, we see that they stop being red. The reason for this is that there's a saturation point on the network at any given time. And anything past that saturation point is going to actually get reward penalties assigned to it. And so whatever the rewards are that they should have gotten for that epic, a percentage will actually be taken off because their pool is oversaturated. Okay. Currently, when this video is being filmed, that saturation level is right about 63 to 64 million. In March, it's going to cut in half again to about 31, 32 million. So whenever you're watching this video, you're going to want to see what that saturation point is. Tools like Pool Tool will actually do this uh, red highlighting dynamically based on the current saturation point. So you don't necessarily have to look it up, but just be aware of whether or not this uh, number is red. A first filter we can do to just automatically take out any of these that their live stake is already too high is we can come here to our filtering and we're going to click not saturated. So we want pools only that are not saturated. Okay. And while we're at it, let's also do any pools that have no stake assigned to them at all, right? Because we're definitely not going to have anything happening if there's no stake delegated to it at all. So let's go ahead and do both of these and apply. And let's go ahead and close. So now something I want to point out is that all of these now, we see that all the ones that have live stake that were above that red threshold have now been removed. Something to note, however, is that the active stake for some of these can be over that number. And that's okay, right? Because if we go and look at the active stake here. So for example, uh, Ada Light's stake pool three, their active stake is 75 million, but their live stake is only 58 million. So what that means is in the current epic that they are in, their snapshot for the rewards that will be assigned this epic, they will take a penalty, but their live stake for what the next upcoming snapshot will be is below the threshold, so they're good to go. When you are first delegating to a pool or you are switching between pools, keep in mind the important number for you is the live stake, right? Because you are going to be jumping in at this point, and you and everyone else on the live stake, that's the snapshot that will be taken. The network doesn't care about what the previous snapshots were, so your focus should be on the live stake. All right, so with that covered, let's say you're looking for maximum returns. The next thing you're probably going to want to look at is maybe look at here by the lifetime return on stake. Let's see what this is. So here we see, for example, um, this Da Vinci pool and the one above it, we got some really high returns. Uh, returns to expect, by the way, one thing that I'll point out before we even go any further is all pools, no matter their size, as long as they are producing the blocks that they are assigned, over time will converge towards somewhere between a four and 5% return on stake value. Okay, so your immediate question might be, well, how come this one has 29, this one has 19? An important thing to look at is how many blocks have they produced? So we see here, this pool, for example, has a 29% return on stake, but they've only produced one block. So what that means is that they probably had one block, it had a huge payout because their pool wasn't very large, and then they haven't had maybe any more blocks since then, or maybe that just happened, right? Similarly, if you look here, this one has about a 20% return on stake, but they've only minted about 12 blocks. Something to see here, if we were to do another filter, and we were to say, hey, let's look at pools that have over 100 blocks. You can make this whatever you'd like, but just for the sake of this exercise, over 100 blocks, and we'll close this. You see now how our lifetime return on stake drops down dramatically, right? Like the highest you'll see is six point something, and now we're well within that four to five percent range uh, for all of these. And this is only the first hundred. I mean, it keeps going. So that's the first thing to keep in mind, right? You're going to want to look at this ROS value. So we're at an inflection point here that we need to think about as well. When we talk about looking for the best returns, it's not only in terms of what the best returns are total. It's also about how consistent do you want your returns to be? For example, if we look at, let's close this. If we look at here, at uh, this pool here, the, the, the kanji pool, right? Let's go ahead and open this in a new tab. 
Okay, so we see here that their lifetime ROS is about 6.5%. And actually, if you look, this is exactly why, right? They had a couple of times where they got awards, even though their stake was pretty low, and so they got big payouts then. But since then, it looks like their delegation has gone up significantly, and now they're producing blocks more regularly. And this is actually a perfect example of the two different cases that I wanted to show you all at once. If you're looking for a pool that is generating consistent returns and you want to make sure that you get a payout every single epic, you'll want to look for one that when you dig into them that their epic history looks something like this, right? Where you're seeing uh, multiple blocks being produced or even just one block produced, but the idea is that they're getting a return every single time. On the flip side, there is also a strategy that a lot of people employ where you don't necessarily worry so much about consistent returns. You're okay with sort of like lumpy returns, right? Something like this where you'll have a big payout, then nothing, then another big payout, because in your mind you think, well, like for example, if we look at the four epic trend here, is another metric you can play around with. So we do this slider here, and if we look at this guy, the four epic trend at this point was almost 7.5%, even though there was nothing happening in these blocks in between, because when the payouts happened, they were so large, it compensated for the gaps, right? So we were saying that an average payout is between 4 and 5%. But if you can find pools that are having big payouts every several epics, you might actually have a higher average payout over the span of epics. So just stop and maybe think about that. Do you want to have more consistent payouts every time? Or are you okay with these chunky returns that might net you a higher return over time, but you don't necessarily see a payout every time? So again, this pool is a great example because they went from being sort of these lumpy returns to being consistent returns and they actually helped a really good example here all at once. So that's one thing to consider. Another approach is taking a more purpose-driven approach, right? That we talked about a little bit earlier. So if I come here, I'm just gonna randomly, I'm just gonna type in part of the word charity and we'll see what we get. Okay, cool, so we see a couple of uh, pools here that looks like they are based, uh, sort of charity-based and this is sort of a, uh, philanthropic in, in, in a larger sense, right? Of like giving to charity organizations. Another option you could do is if you wanted to support channels like ours and you want to find your favorite, let's say your favorite YouTube content creator who's helping you through the Cardano process, right? Like a pool, a pool like ours. That's one way that you could think about. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll point out, for example, is, again, keeping in mind with sort of this notion of chunky returns, right? If you look at Aspen, for example, if you look, we only have one block that we've made so far, but because it was such a large payout when it happened, our lifetime return is still hovering around that 5%. And also keep in mind, right, that when it's your turn to actually come now and do this, uh, you know, you might be watching this video days or weeks after we've filmed it. You want to do these searches for yourself and see what some of these metrics are at that time, right? Because, for example, if you're watching this a few months from now, like the blocks produced by Aspen may be much higher. So maybe you say, yeah, uh, I'm not really a big fan of lumpy returns. I want to have something consistent. Maybe our pool is producing consistently by then. Or maybe you say, you know what? I don't care about lumpy returns. That's fine as long as in the long run it all averages out. And that's great. And we'd be happy to have your delegation. But in either case, aside from our pool, for any pool at all, you want to think about these different factors. And you want to also make sure that you either, when you're doing your initial delegation, you start looking at what some of these different metrics are. Or if you want to be more active and you want to be actively managing this, that you come through and check regularly on the latest stats of things like what is the live stake, what has the payout been, these kinds of things. So let's say, for example, uh, we, we found a pool that we liked, let's say Aspen, for example, and you want to keep track of it. You can also favorite it here on Pool Tool. And so in the future, when you come back, like let's say you sit down, you go through several pools, you go to their web pages. Oh, one thing else that I want to show here, you can actually click here on the pool and it'll link you to their web page. So here's our webpage, for example, uh, links to some of our recent videos, right? Um, so you can also open up their web pages, find out more about them, find out about the infrastructure and setup of how their nodes are set up. Are they using virtual machines? Are they using uh, uh, bare metal machines? Is that something that matters to you? Maybe it does. And if it doesn't, then that's okay too, right? So let's say you find several that you like. You can come and favorite them. Let me take off Aspen and let me just favorite a few more just for the sake of, of the exercise. And after you spent a bunch of time finding a bunch of pools and you're narrowing down your search, you can come here and the next time you come back, you can click on favorite and apply and it'll only show you your favorites. So hopefully that's given you some ideas and the strategies you can use to find the right stake pool for you. But I'm curious, do you have some really good approaches that maybe we didn't think of? Are there certain metrics that you look at that we didn't mention? 
Maybe you found the perfect formula for tracking down the best stake pool every time. We'd be curious to hear. Let us know below in the comments. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And as always, if you appreciate the work that we do here and you'd like to support the channel, consider delegating to our Aspen stake pool, which we'll link down below. We'd truly appreciate it. Happy pool hunting, and we'll see you next time.